Okay, in terms of uh, the architecture and, and protections and rings and uh, all the stuff that we have talked about, um, uh, again, uh, we've got some related concepts in terms of resilience, um, fault tolerance. Uh, in terms of integrity, of course, it's not just, you know, people attacking our integrity. There are also just, the, you know, simple errors, failures um, that we have to be aware of, that we have to protect against. Um, uh, and so, you know, resilience, fault tolerance, um, failover, uh, the, you know, if uh, the system or a part of the system uh, fails, then uh, is there a, a backup of some kind that can take over uh, the function, the functions, some of the functions, you know, uh, can, can we keep on going? And of course, we're going to talk about uh, business continuity, disaster recovery, uh, and the planning and fault in that. Um, but uh, again, I have made this point before. I will make it again because uh, we have to fight against the the ingrained tendency, the uh, assumption in business that we must be pursuing efficiencies. Uh, you know that is, you know, our God in in uh, capitalism is is. A efficiency, uh, trimming the margins, lean and mean, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but remember, um, and you know, it's well, the, the pandemic pointed this out to us in so many ways. Um, efficient systems are brittle, they are fragile. Um, when they break, they break in a big way, and you, uh, you know, when you've got uh, very, very strong efficiencies, when you have pursued efficiency that much, um, you just, you don't have anything left over when something does go wrong. Um, you know, we don't have resilience. We, uh, we don't have backups. We don't have margins. We don't have failover because we have stripped out the redundancy in the name of efficiency. Now, this... Uh, of course, relates to other aspects of uh, system architecture, and that is uh, centralization and decentralization. You know, do we have a monolithic system? Uh, do we have a, a decentralized system, uh, a distributed system? Um, do we have uh, component pieces uh, tied together with, with networks? Um, uh, Again, you know, that, that can produce resilience. It can produce situations. I, I can well remember one particular ISP that I used to have accounts with um, where uh, different parts of, of their system would uh, fail on a regular basis. You know, when it was something like, um, you know, the access system, you, know, you just couldn't get on. But uh, one of the interesting things was their DNS would go down regularly. Well, this was back in the days. I mean, you know, DNS is basically just a phone book. Uh, it is translating what we're using as words into the actual numeric IP addresses. Well, I had, in those dim and distant days, um, written down all the IP addresses for uh, the mail server, for uh, different... Uh, systems that I needed to use and so um, when I got on uh, but couldn't get anywhere uh, because the web browser uh, you know wouldn't bring something up okay no problem we just switch over to using numeric IP addresses and I was able to get everything done uh, really uh, interesting in, in terms of a situation where uh, the distribution, um, you know, not all the different parts of the system would fail, but one part would fail. And for most people, that meant that they couldn't use the system at all. Uh, so, um, you know, the different aspects of distributed computing, um, 
Uh, there's the good old client server uh, architecture, uh, that sort of thing. There's also um, uh, good old clustering, um, very tightly coupled. Uh, interestingly, there there are again vendors who say that they produce clusters, but the clusters aren't very tightly coupled, and and so when something fails, uh, you may not have um, a distributed or resilient system. In that regard, um, they uh, very often will, um, you know, just just feel even though they call it a cluster. Good old uh, DEC, Distributed Equipment Corporation, later just uh, no, sorry, uh, Digital Equipment Corporation, uh, later just called Digital, um, and uh, their uh, systems were true clusters and. Uh, I can remember one particular company. We didn't care, you know. There were uh, uh, there was maintenance going on on various systems all the time. It didn't matter. Our account would be on a particular system, but the cluster uh, could handle that. And if if our particular system was down, we could still work because uh, other machines in the cluster had enough distribution, had enough uh, resources. So that, yeah, um, you know, our machine was down for maintenance. Didn't matter. All our stuff was available to us. We we got the job done. So, um, you know, how how distributed, how tightly coupled, how, uh, you know, what what type of of distribution is uh, done with these things and, and what um, are the... Uh, the functions, um, uh, do they give us the, the level of resilience that we need, um, the availability that we need, and, and again, you know, uh, taking into account, um, you know, which type of security is important to us. Is it, uh, you know, is the availability more important than the uh, confidentiality uh, aspect of it? You may want to choose your architecture on that basis um, so you need to you need to understand uh, that part of the architecture the centralization the decentralization the fault tolerance um, of the the architecture that you've got and again if your architecture is is based on confidentiality, that the confidentiality is more important to you, then we have to, uh, in the business continuity planning part, uh, add on extra functions to ensure that, yes, the systems are available, um, uh, possibly that integrity is, is maintained, that sort of thing. So, uh, the, the architecture, um, has a, uh, a basic, a, a central uh, uh, set of functions, a um, uh, set of characteristics, uh, but we can add additional layers of other types of security if we need to do that.